two things happened this today. Number one, uh, Netflix came out in the middle of the day and they said they're laying off, I forgot what the number was, but they were laying off uh, X amount of uh, employees, right? Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, the reason why there was no uh, video last night, uh, our guy Kyler, who does a phenomenal, phenomenal job uh, editing these videos and doing everything that's possible uh, to make uh, me look good, uh, he got married, so congratulations to Kyler. That's why there was no video yesterday. So we are back today. Usually I'm off Thursday nights, uh, but hey, we didn't do a video yesterday. So let's talk about the market. So the last time there was prosperity, right? If you guys remember, we reclaimed the 20-day moving average on, uh, what was it, on 526. And for the next two weeks, we kind of went sideways. And the longer the market couldn't rally, the higher probability the market was going to go back down. Now, Here's a little bit of a difference between what we saw right over here and kind of where we are about to enter, or possibly enter uh, for tomorrow's session. If you guys remember, every single time there was good news in this consolidation, it kept on getting sold. If you look what's been happening for the last couple of days, the market has been, let's, we we're talking about the NASDAQ, right? The NASDAQ has been very, very strong. Yes, the semiconductors, something's definitely wrong with them. Uh, NVIDIA can't get out of its own way. Uh, AMD can't get out of its own way. So let's just take, let's take the semiconductors out of it. And what's making this more impressive, the fact that we're not going down is the semiconductors represent the biggest group, right? The, the most predominant group in the NASDAQ 100. The fact that we are still putting in some pretty good moves now, four days in a row, without the semiconductors really saying some really positive things. Like for example, uh, yesterday, right? Yesterday we hit the 10 day moving average. We went red on the day, right? That should have been the first instinct of, hey, we just got rejected off the 10 day moving average, selling's back normal. What did the market do? The market reclaimed yesterday's channel today. And now we are a stone throws away of getting above this channel here. You see this uh, 287 here on the queues, right? That was the high from uh, 615, right? Everybody see it? So if we can just get above this channel here of 615, uh, to, uh, 286.83, uh, right? There's a shot we could rally into the 290s. And one of the other, you know, one of the other, uh, you know, pretty good dynamics today that happened, just to kind of give you an idea of, you know, how strong the market has been versus the last time we were going through consolidation, two things happened this today. Number one, uh, Netflix came out in the middle of the day and they said they're laying off, I forgot what the number was, but they were laying off uh, X amount of uh, employees, right? Usually that's a bad, bad thing. The stock would have got killed, yada, yada, yada. They didn't get killed. Not only they didn't get killed, it literally closed stone throws away from, uh, from the high of the day. That's very, very bullish. Also, the smaller cap names came back. You guys remember when we had that big, big r rally and the consolidation, there was a lot of names going crazy. Uh, look at names, for example, like a BHAT, right? Big, big move today, huge volume, 208 million shares. Stock is flying after hours. Another name, VRM. And again, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm proving a point here that, that it's speculation, not money. Not necessarily that I wanna trade small cap stocks. What I'm saying is this is all representation of uh, speculation money that we didn't have, right? That we didn't have for the last two weeks or so. Every news flow was getting sold. And now is the opposite, completely opposite. Uh, we are getting uh, data, whether it's bad data, it's getting engulfed, at least for the last four days or so. The Fed continues to speak literally every single day, um, which, which is not changing anytime soon. But the point is at least the dissemination of any type of negative factor uh, through what we're seeing is at least now being engulfed for the, for, for the, for the short time. Now, again, by no means are we out of the woods, right? Like, like, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, you know risk is off, completely off, until we reclaim the 50-day moving average at least the 306, 307 level. So we got a long, long 
uh, time to kind of fish, you know, swim in these waters before we got, kind of get uh, get out of supply. But for the meantime, and that's the most important part. For the meantime, we're talking about a day-to-day -day scenario that we are always prepared on both sides of the ledger. You know, we're not trying to overthink. That's exactly the most important part. I'm not trying to overthink. I'm just simply reacting to day-to-day to -day intervals. Here's supply, here's supply. We can clearly see what our eyes are. You don't need to be a super aggressive technician to figure out if we could just take out the supply. We got another, you know, three to five points of upside in the in the queues. If you look at the spies as well, same thing here. Spies touch the 10 day moving average. If the spies can reclaim today's levels tomorrow and start building above that 379 level, again, there's, there's almost 10 points of upside uh, in the S&P 500. So, you know, we're definitely, definitely set up here. But the most important part is what we're seeing as far as flow all day today, right? In the last couple of days, massive flow coming in on Amazon. I mean, they, they, when the stock was at 109, and again, 109 today, they were coming with massive flow. They were coming for the 12s, the 13s, the 14s that expire tomorrow. Uh, aggressive call buying continues uh, for net, uh, for uh, Tesla, even though Tesla is resting, right? And this is the first good res day today. A beautiful, beautiful run, put up 125 points. It's just resting. If Tesla can start coming out of the 60 minute channel, right? And this is a bit tough, tough channel here. But if it could start coming out of the uh, this, this, this really big 60 minute channel, we can start seeing some really aggressive moves and maybe start moving back into the 680 level. Again, we saw the 770 weeklies. We saw the 800 weeklies. You know, the, the options market is definitely betting on the side of the measured potential. So that's something we definitely want to watch. And what's, what's, what's making things kind of cool uh, going into tomorrow's session, tomorrow is weekly expiration, right? If there has been good news, uh, if there's been good price action this week, uh, to the, especially to the upside, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today's Thursday, Monday, we were off. But if that spills over, there's usually a high probability that we could get something very, very aggressive tomorrow, just because again, people are feeling good, it's weekly expiration, and sometimes they do make outlandish bets especially in the morning, just the shot, right? They call it the lotto, right? The lotto bets, just in shot, the stock goes into that measure of potential. So that's something uh, we definitely wanna, we definitely wanna watch. So pretty basic stuff this evening, right? Uh, we need to, from the bullish side, the Qs need to reclaim uh, 287, right? There's this whole channel here. This is the highest area into supply where it got rejected off the five day. So it needs to get above 287 to really stretch its legs. The spies need to get above this uh, needs to get above this 379 level, and then we're off. We're off and running. And if you look at a lot of, if you if you do your homework uh, and you go through a lot of charts, you'll see a lot of big potential uh, in these names, especially in the tech arena. And when you look at today's pivots, we, we really had a very very strong day because everything started to expand, especially in the software cloud space. But we we we're definitely set up for tomorrow. The only thing that could throw the only thing that can throw uh, a wrench into our plans, keep this in mind, guys, at the end of the day, there's been some great opportunities on the long side, but the end of the day, the narrative continues to be one thing, right? Drum roll, please. We're still below daily supplies. That's the only thing. And at any point, the market could just tap you on the shoulder and yank all your bids. So don't fall in love, right? This is, again, a risk off environment for multi-day holds. Day trading, that's a, you know, that's one thing. That's a completely separate animal. You have completely control of your risk. But we're still underneath daily supply. So even if we rally tomorrow, treat it as a rental. Don't fall in love with these symbols. Because again, the most important part, especially in a sell environment where we still are, and we've been there for six months, remember, sell when you want to, not when you have to. So let's talk about uh, today's pivots. Again, super aggressive day. Uh, actually, on both sides, there's some pretty good pulls. Uh, there was some pretty good moves. Um, and you quickly see some really, really good trades today. Um, Tesla had a, a nice little pull, you know, definitely for cash flow. Uh, 701 uh, yesterday's and today's pre-market lows. If it builds below, it could get into the 680s. It traded down to about 
685, 687. But I, I really like the action there because, again, it wasn't supposed to be uh, Tesla's going to zero. It was just the stock had a big, big run, a little bit, you know, a little bit heavy, just it needs a little bit of time to digest. But I'm definitely, definitely watching it for potential for it to wake up for the next couple of days. Uh, letter U. Letter U was a, a direct byproduct of uh, Snowflake. Snowflake got upgraded today, exploded. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, letter U, 40 and a quarter needs to build. Here is letter U. Letter U exploded, absolutely exploded. Here is the 40 and a quarter. The stock pretty much closed at the highs of the day, uh, 44 60s. I, I think if we continue tomorrow, I think there's a shot at 47. Uh, Meta, Meta is such a such a weird name. So I shorted Meta, Meta at 55. Uh, I shorted Meta, uh, Meta at 55. Uh, it went down like 50, 60 cents and it kind of stalled out. It stopped me out break even, then rallied up three points, then came back down and then rallied. So I'm going to kind of leave my uh, leave my meta on, on the on, on the side here for, for now. Uh, Snow absolutely exploded today. It's upgraded. 136 needs to build for experienced traders. Uh, could push to 140. Here was Snowflake. Right here was Snowflake. It took out the 136, traded all the way up to almost 144. Big move. On Snowflake, uh, Airbnb, again, this is pretty good two-sided two action today. Uh, Airbnb, 98.72, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Airbnb, right? Airbnb, here was the 92, here was the 98.72, went all the way down to 93. Really, really big washout on Airbnb. Uh, Chewy to the upside, 33.45 needs to build. Here was Chewy. A lot of good value today. Definitely a lot of good value today. Here's a 33.45, just absolutely exploded. Uh, almost hit the top of supply. Uh, Square never got to 59. Square never got to 59. Uh, Amazon, I, I took Amazon for an opening range play. It rallied initially up 30 cents. Obviously wasn't enough. Um, so when it got rejected, I lost about 30, 35 cents on it. But again, it is, it is what it is. And it closed uh, pretty, pretty strong. Shop was pretty good. Uh, Shop was a pretty good trade. Uh, 350 needs to build. Here was shop. Really nice move. I still like it for tomorrow. So it took out this 350 level, which was the highest supply zone. Again, the 20 day reclaim took out 350, traded into the 360s. Uh, 365 was the high. I still like this thing if it confirms today. Uh, there's a shot, man. If we continue to rally, why, you know, again, look how much room you have. You have room all the way up to uh, 404. Again, not saying it's going to get there tomorrow, but again, if we continue to rally, uh, there's there's definitely a lot of airspace. The shop was pretty good. Chewy take on the way up. Uh, Airbnb getting smacked. Uh, Tesla, uh, 82, 84. So next stop, but it ultimately stopped at 685. Uh, letter U went all the way up to 46. Shop, 357 is the first supply. Went to the 360s. Uh, and here was, here was a trade um, that I put in that I thought if the Tesla was going to get sold, here's where we wanted to kind of buy the dip. Obviously, never got there. For experienced traders, only 679, 680. If, it builds, if the bulls can defend, it could snap back all five-day support. It, it just, it's a shame that it didn't get down there, but uh, it is what it is. Would have been a pretty good, uh, pretty good spot. And that's it. So uh, good, good effort today. Definitely, definitely good effort today. Let's see if... Uh, the bulls can continue to end the week strong. Uh, so far, very, very good orderly action, both on the long uh, and the short side. Obviously, we know the lines in the sand for both the Qs, uh, the spies to the, for the upside. If they do confirm, we could see another aggressive push to end the week. Guys, God bless. Hope everybody's doing well. And with God's help, I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.